Making a life worth living and retirement worth having is really about the people in our lives. It's about the people that we talk to. It's about the people that we don't talk to. It's about the people that we should talk to. But the reality is that when a person decides to destroy another person's life, they go about it pretty wholeheartedly. They really go at it. And when they do it, they just involve as many people as possible in a mobbing incident. You see, mobbing is a tactic that the military and the law enforcement officers around the globe utilize to psychologically abuse someone. It's also what they do to monkey around in a person's mental state and physical health. They literally think they have rights in the house of God to do what they're doing. You see, if they were actually following the rules of the land, the international human rights laws, they wouldn't do anything like this. But in life, we have people who don't follow the rules. We have people who don't like rule followers, and we have people who like to be outside the lines of life. They like to live on the edge. They like to produce results. They like to dabble in paint, and they literally like to think that they're not being seen by God. The funny thing is that everyone has a moment in time when they can help someone, but a lot of people choose not to. The Lord's standing right there, watching, waiting for someone to do their job, and literally, they don't. They don't actually do their job. They perform the very basics of what they're supposed to do in a role, but when they give it an opportunity to do something else, they literally don't do it. Then they actually gossip about what they've been doing. And openly, it's sort of hard not to pay attention to what's going on on screen, but in reality, what I'm talking about is how do we help someone in need? You see, one of the greatest challenges of helping someone in need is listening skills. Most people cannot listen these days without dragging their own souls into the listening process. You see, there are two types of listeners generally. Those who involve their own emotions in listening to someone talk, and those who simply purely listen to go, okay, there's something afoot here, and I might be able to help solve the simplest of issues if I really listen without putting myself into it. And in reality, when a person asks simple questions, the person deserves simple answers. But we have a lot of youthful people in positions of power today, or positions of quote-unquote leadership, that aren't leading at all. <clears throat> they really aren't doing anything. They're listening, but then they're focusing on all the wrong information that's being given. They literally are missing the questions completely, and they don't actually get that they've just offended someone in their entire way so that person's life, time, spirit, soul, energy, emotions. And that creates upset in the individual who's looking for help. You see, there's a lot of people in need in this world. Everybody has different needs. But the question is, what are the most basic of human rights needs that we have? Well, to have clean water that's untainted or a clean beverage that's not been drugged. Two, to have food that is clean and that is safe and that is produced by loving hands in the world that literally are doing the best to care for our animals and animal husbandry and hopefully trying to preserve those states of animals so that we can have them all the days of our lives and all the days of generations to come. Those farmers and those ranchers produce, provide for us our food in this world. And then third, we're looking for the food handlers. You see, the food handlers are often paid the lowest of our living wages, and I don't quite grasp that, because these are the people that provide for us sustenance, nutrition, opportunities, enjoyment, pleasure, and our eating habits. These are the people who literally are looking for, how do I produce a life worth living and a retirement worth having when I'm barely making it in my own wages? A lot of the politicians today are talking about how can we improve what we're doing actually in the way of producing better farms and better food and better wages. The problem is that we have twofold aspects of the living wage. We have the most minimum of wages, which barely puts food on the table and a roof over the house over the head and literally no transportation or gas at all. And then we have those who make millions and billions of dollars without a thought to other people who are in struggle. You see, that's sort of what happens to me. <clears throat> they don't really understand how hard it is to produce a life without technology. They don't really understand how difficult it is to challenge someone who's interfering with their little rights. In my case, I've had someone interfering in every aspect of my legal name, every aspect of my medical health, every aspect of my mental health, which was perfectly fine before all this happened, but the stress is tough. And then we have people who just are slow to answer and slow to respond and slow to help solve problems. And then there are those who are just too young to get how to solve a problem. 
and they're in positions that make them look like they have power, but in truth, they give away the power, or they take power from others. Now let's talk about what that means. It means that an individual of an organization has literally said, you know what, I'm going to decide for every single person that's a member here. I'm just going to make a blanket decision that the answer is no. You see, the problem with that is that it doesn't allow the people the opportunity to listen, to hear what's needed, to decide if they have the resources or the opportunities or the philanthropic soul to help, and then literally to provide that assistance. You see, that's where people remain in homelessness. It's because people remain homeless because it's everything is in a cycle, a circle. You see, if you don't have a telephone, it's hard to produce any other technology. If you don't have an email, it's hard to produce a phone. If you don't have the ability to receive bills electronically, sometimes you can't pay them. And openly, if you have someone monkeying in your bank accounts and taking your money or pretending to be you and taking your files and taking your resources and taking your little aspect of history, taking into account your physicalities, which isn't their lawful right to do, and literally monkeying in your medical files so that you can't get the care that you've been accustomed to, everything goes haywire. I know in my case, I've been involved in something for 20 plus years, but the reality is I have family that don't like it and don't care for it and want it to begin to stop. But the reality is they were not a part of those physician teams that did the research and I don't have to produce all that information today. I don't have to go back 20 years to decide this over again. I know it's right for me. I know it works for me. And openly, when they monkeyed around and things, I started to become ill. The minute I got back to me, then everything was fine. You see, in life we have monsters in this land who think they know the Lord's plan for a human being. They think they know the Lord's plan for a life. They think they know the Lord's plan for a human being's body. They think that a body or biology produces something. And that's not really true. We have a lot of people with deficits physically. We have a lot of people with deficits mentally. We have a lot of people with deficits intellectually and emotionally. But a lot of that often comes from poor training, poor education. And openly, I get tired of the argument. You see, creating good training programs isn't all that hard. It's about, okay, what's the problem and what's the solution? When I call the church today, actually a church that's fairly well known in the community, and its name is not so important, but when I call that church, which is literally on my path, a couple blocks, literally, or miles, even that, to where I am usually walking, to say, listen, I could use one can of food today for a meal. Do you know what they did? They literally said, we can't do that. And I'm sitting here thinking, a can of food that costs a dollar, really, to have a decent sized can to fill the stomach, it costs a dollar and not one person in that organization, not one person in that congregation was given the right to decide if they would like to donate one can from their pantry to help someone to eat today. Isn't that amazing? That these Christians out there literally talk about the Bible, know the Bible verses, supposedly backwards and forwards, and yet they don't pay any attention to the Bible verses on poverty, on feeding the hungry. And we're talking more about feeding the soul of an individual. You know Jesus talked about that a lot. You see, the soul is what Jesus was concerned with. But a lot of people in the land, the liars of the land, are only concerned with the physical body. They don't recognize the soul even when they're challenged to recognize the soul, even when they're told you're not portraying Jesus in loving moments right now, you're not creating peace, you're creating havoc, you're not creating opportunities, you're creating dismantling. And openly, when we tell them that, they get upset. And the reality is, it's not their life that's being dismantled, it's someone else's. But they feel they have the right to decide what someone else has and doesn't have with them. And that's not their lawful right. You see, the Lord has the lawful right to take people home if he's displeased with them. The Lord has the power and might to burn someone up in seconds. The Lord has the ability to do so, as pretty much been shown across Europe with some of the most Cretans of the world. They just literally get burned up and investors go in and go, what the heck happened here? But the reality is we all know that the Lord has that power. If you've never literally been folded in half by God, then maybe you don't recognize the power of God. Maybe you don't understand that angelic forces serve only God. We have literally Bible verses that say that the angels kneel before him and don't look upon or gaze upon the Lord. They talk about the light being too bright, but that's not usually, I think, what they mean. I think they mean that the love, the intensity, the abilities of God, the magic of the house of the Lord is so huge 
that they can't possibly be anything remotely close to what a God in heaven that's created everything under heaven and earth. Literally, think about it. The thousands upon thousands upon thousands of microorganisms that have created our world into larger, small beings and beasts and all that sort of thing is literally not powerful enough to do that? I don't think so. But I've experienced being folded in half. I've been experienced I've experienced being told no in a way that was physical when I was going to be basically my own self and decide this is the right time for me, but it wasn't God's right time. And openly, when I was going to be taken home to heaven in a moment of great despair, I told God, I'm not ready to go quite yet. I want to give this love one more chance. I want to give it an opportunity. And so he decided to say, okay. The problem was that people got involved after that and totally destroyed a relationship of mine. Utterly destroyed it with their counsel, with their gossip, with their inappropriate thoughts. And they missed all the love in the world that the Lord had put in me for an individual. You see, when you attack a person's love life, you destroy nothing other than your own relationship with them. When you attack their life in any way, you destroy every right you had to them. Not that you had any in the first place. That's the funniest thing about what's going on in the world, that people believe they have the right to steal. They believe they have the right to thieve. They believe they have the right to take organs. They believe they have the right to take people. They believe they have the right to sexually sell them. They believe they have rights that are unbelievable. Can you imagine? Who the heck trained them? What monstrous mother or father let their child grow up thinking that they were the center of the universe and that they had all that power to wield over someone else's life? You see, monsters will stand and will ignore someone saying, you may not enter here, you may not come near me, you may not come by me. Monsters do that, bullies do that. I know because I had two bullies push on me this weekend, a father and a son team, and openly they're related to my sister. How ill is that? That I said, I'm sorry, you are not welcome to follow me into where I pay a bill. Whether or not I pay it this second or whether or not I pay it in the future, it doesn't really matter. The bottom line is that legally, it's mine. And if they violated federal law and made it not mine any longer, that was a violation of federal law. Now, when I talk on federal law, those videos tend to get deleted, and then someone goes, great, he said it, so let's just do it to him. Like one of my Christian metaphysical teachers tried to say, law of attraction. If you put that out there, it's going to come back to you. No, it comes back because people hear it and say, let's just do it to him. Now, in life, we've got moments of time to make all the difference in the world. You might not like my face right now. I can't say I like my face right now, but that's not the point. The point is that literally, if I'm going to be a secret shopper in places just to be my own self and to be my own best self, then I have to produce a look. That look may or may not get served, and we have to test our people. We always have to test our people in this world. We have to know who can we trust, who can we get help from, who doesn't see things other than what they see in front of them, versus who sees the soul. You see, the men and women of God see the soul. People who are not men and women of God don't see the soul at all. They see features, they see faces, they see bodies, they see beings, and if they're ill-willed and if they're illegal, they might actually strip someone of their clothes and literally force them to show them their body. That's happened with law enforcement and me. I never in the wildest dreams thought that I would have so many people who had access to my nakedness. What a humiliating thing that a man is being shown his body to other people with women helping them to do that literally by drugging them in order to make it happen. That's sort of the imagination of the sex trade, is it not? That someone goes out with someone, they start talking, they start becoming relationships, and then all of a sudden there's a needle that's pulled and someone wakes up finding that they don't have their clothes on anymore and openly someone has violated them. That is a violation of rights. Now, when I'm talking about me, I know that's happened to me. I've woken up with things on me that I was appalled to know. When I say this to family members, they don't care. They literally don't care. Probably because it's them. You see, I know every single thing they've done, but I don't have the energy to repeat it all to them. I know every stitch of clothing they've changed out. I know every single fabric they've removed. I know every single pocket they've taken off. I know every single cuff they've switched around so the shirt doesn't work anymore. I know every single shirt they've downsized. I know every single thing they've done. But it gets old trying to be heard. It gets old trying to say stop. It gets old completely. And the reality is they get help from other people in the community. They can lie their way into destroying a life. They can lie their, li their lies. They can tell their stories. They can get people to believe them because they give one piece of information and everybody thinks, oh, I got rights to do stuff now. 
it's like the people who decide to do something kind for someone and generous, but in return they think, because I paid you this or because I did this for you, I'm going to take this from you now and I'm going to make it mine because that's in essence what the deal was. That's not true at all. That's not what was articulated. There's always going to be someone who's going to try and lie, steal, and cheat people out of life because we allow it. We literally allow that to happen to people. Now in life we have moments of time to make differences for people. And the difference is usually based on the needs the individual has totally, but the ones that the individual wants to prioritize as this is what's important today. That church in Fishers is pathetic. That that 20-year-old person in leadership couldn't figure out how to self-solve a simple problem. He couldn't simply think and go, gosh, there's a dollar store just up the road from my church. I will drive up there and produce one can of food. What would you like to eat? How hard would that have been? It would have cost him maybe a buck fifty with the gas. You see, that's how we solve problems today. We listen and we learn. There are other people who won't refuse to talk to people as if they're in junior high still. I'm just not going to talk to you anymore. You just want to say, who in the world is your Lord? The Lord doesn't say to do things like that. The Lord doesn't say to monkey around in people's files. The Lord doesn't say to steal from people. The Lord doesn't say to resize things and do things to people's property. The Lord doesn't say that at all. The Lord doesn't say to lie about people's rights and their medical care or their mental health care. And the Lord doesn't say that's okay. Yet people do it because they've lost God. They've totally lost God in those moments. They don't ever ask the question, what would Jesus do right now? To prove love, to prove peace, to prove honor to Christianity. They never think about that. They just do their own little selfish thing. Now in life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. Today might be your day. Tomorrow might be someone else's. But the bottom line is, people around the world have to eat. And we go to foreign countries all the time to put in wells and to improve water and to make sure people have food, even if it's just porridge and gruel that's not very tasty, instead of the stuff that we're accustomed to in America. But when somebody really goes through a loss because of the attacks of other people, people don't even want to believe it. The guy who helped me this morning didn't want to believe what happened, that someone stole my underwear. Just got brand new pairs of underwear that I'm due to pay back. Forty bucks worth of underwear. But someone decided to steal it from a locked cabinet, basically a locked storage unit that's been thieved through many times. And every time I mention what goes has gone missing, poof, it comes back. It's not me mislaying it. I literally haven't moved anything in that storage unit other than a few bags. So it's kind of odd. It's like a game, and people play games on other people all the time. They think it's funny. They think it's comedy. We've got famous actors and comedians who literally play these games that are putting people in harnesses, hanging them over vats of God knows what, like it's funny. Why don't you set them down on the chair next to you, get to know them as human beings, and say, you know, you've got stuff going on in your life. What can I do for you right now, at this moment in time, that really impact you in a loving and kind way? Wouldn't that be a great place to live? You see, in life we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. And today might be your moment. But if you're not paying attention to other people's lives, if you're making jokes about them, if you're thinking that they're so much different than you, they're really not. Everyone has the right to human life. Everyone has the right to be safe. Everyone has the right to their own property. And everyone has the right to their own name. In life we have moments of time to make all the difference in the world for someone. What do you do in your life to make a difference and show the love of the Lord every day. Thanks for listening.